Hey guys, it's Jax here, and today I'm going to be telling you guys about the three new mobs that are being introduced in Minecraft 1.19. Well, there are technically four mobs being introduced, but I count the tadpole and the frog as one mob because the tadpole is just sort of like a baby variant of the frog. But anyway, let's move on to the first mob, the alley. Now, the alley is a passive mob and it only interacts with players. It is found in pillager outposts and woodland mansions in groups of one, two, three. Now, it isn't found in all woodland mansions and all pillager outposts, but it is very common. Now, in the Woodland Mansions, you can find up to four jails, which is where the alleys are found. So, you can find up to 12 alleys. Now, once you find these alleys, sadly, you cannot breed them. So, that means you have to go out and keep on hunting for them if you want more of them. The alley has a very interesting mechanic. They're almost like a portable hopper. Let me explain. To explain how this works, I'm going to be sporting in an alley. But let's just say you found yours in a pillager outpost or a Woodland Mansion. Now when you find this alley, you can right click on him with an item in your hand and he will start holding this item. So now he's holding mangrove leaves. But what this means is he is going to look in all loaded chunks for this item. Now, once he finds this item, he's going to pick it up like that and fly over to me and drop them for me. Now he will look in all loaded chunks for these items and but he'll only pick them up if they have been dropped on the ground. If they are in a barrel or they've been placed as an item, as a block like this, he will not collect them. So they have to be dropped on the ground and then he will drop them to me. Now he can hold up to a stack of any item. So if it's a stack of 16, he can hold up to that. If it's a stack of 64, hold up to that. Or if it's an unstackable item, he can only hold one of those. Now you can change out the item your ally is holding by right clicking it with a bare hand or empty hand like that and then re-clicking him with a new block for example the mud block now the alley is no longer your pet as soon as he stops holding the item you gave him so he won't follow you around where if he was holding a mud block if i flew all the way over here he will fly over to me like all mobs sometimes it takes a little while but he will follow over and then start looking in the area around me but as soon as you take that block away from him, he is no longer your pet. So I always suggest you give him some item, even if it's not an item you want him to pick up, just so he remains at your pet and no one else can steal your alley. What if you don't want the alley to drop the items to you? Well, we can use a note block. If I ding this note block like this, see it sends out a little signal to the alley. And what that means is if an item is dropped, for example, now mud, is going to drop that on the note block. However, this note block, I like to call it a beacon, will only last for 30 seconds. So if you ding this, then the LA finds it 40 seconds later, he will no longer drop it on this note block and will only drop it on the player. So a way to fix this is to automate this so it is constantly going ding, ding, every 30 seconds. Now, using this technique with the note block, you can use it in so many different ways, but I'm so excited for the redstoning aspect of it in using it in farms and item sorters because it'll save on loads of hoppers and even save on lag. And of course, it's cool to have a little alley buddies flying around carrying your items everywhere. As well as that, you can use an alley to find any lost diamonds if you're doing a mining expedition and you're mining out a big area, or you can use it to clean up an area as well. If you'd like to see some uh, farms using this, make sure to watch out on the channel because I'll be uploading some farms very soon. If you'd like to see a specific use for this alley, leave a comment in the comment section down below and I'll get onto it for you. The frog we are moving on to now spawns in groups of one to three in the mangrove swamp biome. Now that is the biome we are currently in. It is the new biome in the 1.19 update. It is just beautiful. I love it so much. Now, you breed these frogs with slime and then the frogs will look for water to lay frog spawn which looks like this now this item can't actually be obtained um in survival but it can be obtained in creative as you can see now let's just clear my inventory grab out a few frogs and we will um grab some frogs and some slime balls and let's have a look at these frogs laying their eggs we're going to go down to some water over here so if i were to spawn in two frogs by the water here 
and breed them with slime. We will see them breed like any other normal Minecraft mob, and then they will lay their frog spawn near water. Now these guys are bred right next to water, so they could lay it very easily. But if you breed your frogs just a bit inland, like this, they're going to have to look around for that water. And sometimes it can take them a little while to find water. Now I've even had have I've even had instances where it takes them ages to find water and they don't actually ever find water and they just end up not laying their frog spawn, which was very, very confusing. But here we saw the frog found frog spawn and laid it. So I'm not sure if that is a bug Mojang need to fix, but I'd love to see it fixed in the future because I had it frogs not actually lay their eggs maybe it's just a part of the beast now it takes around 30 seconds for this um spawn to hatch to a tadpole which is the middle stage in these frogs life now the tadpole look just like this little cute little fishy looking type boys and you can pick them up in a bucket so let's hop into survival quickly so i can do this survival then we can pick it up in a bucket like this grab water then right click it and it will be picked up in a bucket like you would with a fish you might be wondering, why would I ever want to do this? Well, you, there are different variants of frogs. We have three variants. We have warm, temperate, and cold. The cold one is the green one. The temperate one is the um, little orangey type brown one here. And the warm is the white one. We are currently in a warm biome. And the biomes on your screen now are, um, have the biomes and then the... Uh, whether they're warm, temperate, or cold. So you can look at those. But you can take these tadpoles into the different biomes and place them down. So if I wanted a green one, I would take it into a cold biome, say a snowy taiga or a snowy sort of ice cap biome. I'd place it down and let it grow up in this biome and it would grow up to be green. But if I did it in, say, um, a desert, it would grow up to be warm. Or if I did it in oak forest, it grow up to be temperate. So that is how you get the different uh, variants because they only naturally spawn in um, a mangrove swamp, but you can bring the tadpole around to the different biomes. Now, there is no point actually farming these frogs for their drops because they don't have any drops. They only have a few XP points when killed, but it's very, very little. But they can be used in another way to farm. So frogs, when a slime or a magma cube is spawned, will attack it, but they will only attack it if it's a small variant. Now this right now is a medium variant, so I'm gonna have to grab out a sword just to kill this. And we'll see, as it gets smaller, the frogs will attack the smallest ones here. As you can see here, they stick their little tongue out, do a very cute attack and kill the slime. Then the slime balls are dropped on the ground and we can collect it. So we could potentially use this in a farm, however, I don't know if it's the most useful way. But it is a pretty cheap slime farm if you don't want to use iron golems. As well as that, they attack magma cubes in the small variant. Well, now this is where it gets useful. In 1.19, new frog lights were added. Now, to get these frog lights, a frog has to kill a magma cube. Let's have a look at that here. There we go. And the frog has now killed the magma cube and we get the pearlescent frog lights. There are three different types of frog lights, and you may have guessed it already, but the three different variants of frogs give it the three different, uh, three different frog lights. So we have the pearlescent, the verdant, and the ochre frog light. Just to restate this, a frog will only kill the smaller versions of the slime and the magma cube. But you could place these frogs into a wither farm, kill the big magma cubes, and let the frogs get the smaller versions of them. And that way you get a frog light farm, as well as a wither skeleton farm. Wouldn't that be awesome? Now, that's enough of the frog. We had enough of the alley, now enough of the frog. So we're going to go to somewhere a lot more spooky. We are in the ancient city, because it is time to discuss the warden. The third and final mob added to 1.19. Now, the Warden is a hostile mob and is summoned by Skulk Shriekers and is only found in the Deep Dark. This is the Deep Dark. This is actually a structure in the Deep Dark. This is called an Ancient City, which is even spookier. Now, they deal the highest amount of damage in the game for a mob, excluding explosives, um, and they have a melee and ranged attack. So if you don't know what that means, that means that they have a close range attack, 
basically a punching type attack, then they have like a bow and arrow type attack where it's a bit further away. So the melee does 16 damage on easy, 30 damage on normal, and 45 on hard. And the range does 6 damage on easy, 10 on normal, and 15 on hard. So I do not want to get meleeed by this dude because he is going to kill me so quickly. Now, as well as these melee and ranged attacks, they have another attack called the Sonic Shriek. It does up to 15 damage and passes through everything. Now, this only happens when they're really angry and can't find you. Now, resistance can reduce this damage from the Sonic Shriek, but even then, it still does a lot of damage. Now, the thing you want to remember is that you can't actually brew resistance potions. You can brew something called the Turtle Master Potion. Um, which gives you resistance and slowness. So you sort of have to pick your poison here. Do you want to have speed so you can run away from the melee, or do you want to have some extra protection from the other attacks and Sonic Shriek? I personally would choose the speed to run away because I don't want to be near this dude when he hits me with a melee attack worth 45 damage on hard, but pick your poison, it's up to you. I also definitely want to be able to run away from this dude because he has 500 health points. That is in comparison, more than double than that big flying lizard, the Ender Dragon, which is considered the final boss in Minecraft. So, that's crazy. Now, the Warden has some pretty interesting spawn mechanics. Now, to start with, it has to be a light level um, that is below 11, and that actually isn't that dark. I press F3 here. We can see that right here is a light level of 9, and you would think this is safe, but no. I have to be right here next to this light for me to be safe which is terrifying as well as that there has to be no other warden within 48 blocks of where um where it is triggered so just off of that first bit of information to be fully safe from a warden you would have to light up this entire area which would be almost impossible because it all has to be light level of 11 and above so this is scary. This is getting very scary, this mob. Now, I said triggering. There has to be no other water within 48 blocks of wherever it is triggered. So let's talk about that. A trigger, I'm talking about a Skulk Shrieker. A new sort of, I don't know whether it's an entity or a block, is somewhere in between. A player has to trigger Skulk Shriekers four times to spawn in a Warden. Let's head down here into a bit of a darker section. Place a few Skulk Shriekers in and trigger them. But they make off this terrible scream and i have to do this a total of four times now they get activated when i make movement near the skulk sensors here now i can avoid this by sneaking as you can see because i'm being very quiet and you can combat this with um swift sneak i'll talk about more about that later because it makes you sneak a bit faster but let's activate this and try and get a warden to spawn now it takes a little bit for them to spawn and they do spawn um I can spawn a bit further away from you, but I think a warden is getting close. Gotta keep an eye out for him. And here we go. There is a warden. The warden submerges from the ground like this and is absolutely terrifying. Now, he isn't going to attack me at the moment because I am in creative mode, but let's head back to our information board. So, more specifically, the Warden will spawn in an 11 by 13 by 11 box centered on the Shriek that sort of did the final activation. And like I said, it emerges from the ground. Now, the Warden enacts darkness that follows its pulsing chest. This is a very spooky effect. So the angrier it gets, the more it throws out darkness because the faster its chest is pulsing. Now, it stores this anger per player from 0 to 150 and it prioritizes the player with the highest amount of anger. So if it's you and your... F I just heard the warden heartbeat. That was absolutely terrifying. But <laughs> if you and your friend are fighting a warden and you have an anger of 150 from the warden and your friend has 70, you're going to be targeted. Now, I think this could actually be really useful because this means you could set up some sort of bait technique where you become the bait and run around while your friend hits it because the warden will be more angry at you than your friend until your friends hit it a few times, then it's gonna go after them and you're gonna to have to run after them. So it'll have to be this like swapping bait, this sort of like tag team situation. Now, Wardens will attack all mobs, but players will take priority. And the Warden is invulnerable while burrowing. Now, Wardens are immune to fire and lava, so don't even think about using those on them and are unaffected by knockback and fire aspect. 
So very similar to the dragon. And you're probably thinking, Jax, this mob is so tricky to defeat. It's probably got some crazy good drops. Probably drops at least 13 netherite blocks. Well, sadly, no. It drops 5 XP and 1 skulk catalyst. How lame is that? So I think this mob has been placed in just for more of a challenge rather than reward. So the risk versus the reward is pretty unbalanced here, but it's good fun. I think when traversing these ancient cities, it's going to become more of a strategy to avoid this mob rather than a strategy to kill and all the wardens that spawn in. Let's go and have a fight of this warden. Okay, I'm now going to try and get another warden to spawn in. And oh my goodness, you just saw the darkness effect that has just been put upon me. I've got full netherite armor on and a netherite sword. And I'm ready to fight this warden. Now, I'm not sure where he is. There he is. So I'm going to go for a bit of an attack here. See if I can get a bit of high ground on him. Oh my goodness, this is so scary. I need to get a hit on him. I can't hit him. <gasps> and you can see there, with full netherite armor on, full health, I just got one shot by the warden. Now, of course, you can enchant it. But that's only going to do so much. You're still going to get one or two shot by him. So this mob is so scary. But there are a few ways you can make fighting and avoiding this mob a bit easier. Here are a few ideas to face the warden. Now, the first one I've sort of mentioned already, sneak so it can't hear. The warden is actually blind. And that means it's fully relying on sound. So sneaking around is definitely going to help you. And the new swift sneak enchantment, which you can find in these ancient cities in chess, will make you sneak faster. It's almost like a potion of swiftness before when you're sneaking. And you can chuck that on your boots to really help you here. Now, this not only helps you face the warden because the warden can't find you, it also helps you avoid it. And one way to make this even easier is to press escape, go into options, click controls, go to sneak and turn that onto toggle. This means when you press shift, once it is going to toggle it for you and you just have to press, it'll just once and my hands are off my keyboard right now and I'm still sneaking. This means you can toggle it for when you're walking around just exploring the ancient cities and you won't spawn in any wardens. So say if you do spawn in a warden, it's too late now to try and sneak away because it is around and it is deadly. So you can break two blocks around it as you spawn. So as it spawns, you might want to just break a few blocks to try and give you some extra time. Only do this if you have a super high efficiency pickaxe because otherwise you're just going to be left there with your pants down. You can also use webs to slow him down by placing webs in front of him um, to giving you time to get away and run away from danger. Using an elytra, again, you can fly away from danger. Um, so it's similar to these two. These are sort of ways of avoiding him. Now, in a dark environment like this, brings some night vision. As well as that, it counteracts the blindness that it gives you. Even with full netherite armor, it can kill you in two hits. So I definitely suggest using some of those methods to try and get away from the warden. Now, using those methods, let's go and try and face this warden on our own. Now, I always suggest bringing some friends, but worst case scenario, let's go and kill this warden. So I'm geared up. So let's hop into survival mode here and go spawn in one of these wardens. So I have a sharpness five netherite sword, a power five bow, full protection netherite armor, netherite pickaxe, and I've got some of the things that we mentioned on that board. So let's go and find in a warden and spawn him in. Drink this night version as well, night vision. Oh, look at that, isn't that lovely? Run over here, activate some skulk shriekers. Have a look for this warden. You see, it doesn't fully counteract the blindness, but it does make it just a little bit easier to see. Now, let's see where these, where this guy is. Here we go. Now, he's emerging. So, while he's doing this animation, I can try and get a few hits on him. But you can see, I don't have much luck. As I'm running away from him, you can also see how fast he is. He is keeping right up with me. So, I haven't really got a hope there when it comes to running away. So, cobwebs is definitely a useful tactic here. But... I had the sonically charged shriek there, which even if I ran away from him with cobwebs, he hit me with a ranged attack. So you're going to have to really think about how you're going to do this. I haven't thought of a fully plan on how I'm going to be able to beat this dude, and it's going to take a little while, but I'm so ready for this challenge. On that note, that is going to be the end of this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like, comment, and remember to subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you guys later. And remember, stay carbonated.